We've seen many of the metrics and economic indicators telling us that the current economy is one of the best economies we've ever had and is the longest economic expansion in U.S. history. Now, to be fair, it did start under Barack Obama, but it has rapidly expanded under Donald Trump. Amid all the naysayers saying if Trump would win, things would get really, really bad. We've seen record low unemployment. CNBC called the best numbers of our generation, of our lives. And we have seen in minority communities, unemployment going down, labor, labor participation going way up. But we have a new indicator that I think actually shows the real world. Check this story out. Admittedly, the story is meant to be a little silly, but I think it, I think it merits a, a walking through. Taco Bell will test a six-figure salary for managers and roll out paid sick leave as fast food's war for talent continues to rage. I kid you not. Unemployment is so low, Taco Bell is offering now a six-figure salary, and they're putting out paid sick leave. All of these things the leftists claimed that these, these companies need to be rolling out are being ro rolled out naturally due to the excellent economy. Now, at the same time, why is it that the Democrats are trying to claim the economy is actually doing bad? Well, it's because it's the only thing they have. I got to be honest. Now, I've shown you the Vox article where they've said this. Democrats just deny it. We'll read through this again. We've got Democrats actually advocating for Michael Bloomberg for president, championing the wealthy. And now we have a Georgetown University professor saying Bloomberg actually wants to explain to people the economy is really bad. And how about this? Daily Beast saying this is the narrative you need to maintain to win. The economy isn't doing well. Meanwhile, Taco Bell employees be getting six figures and paid benefits. All of these programs, the left wants to implement forcing the government to roll out regulations, you know, forcing businesses to implement these programs. And all that really had to happen was apparently whatever Trump did to bolster the economy, be it the trade war, be it cutting regulations. I don't know, but the economy is doing so well. You didn't need the government to force it. This might be one of the best arguments for just free market capitalism. Now, I tend to be someone who leans a little bit to the left. I think regulations can be fine so long as you're willing to repeal them when they seem to be causing more harm than good. And the way I explain it is that although, although there are left-wing policies that actually do make sense, the problem with the left is they never know when to stop. Perhaps there is a time where you got to pull back a little bit. You're still leaning to the left on a lot of these issues, but there is a limit. Let's read this story. And I know, again, it might be silly, but this, this is important about Taco Bell giving six-figure salaries because while, again, it is silly, like who cares about Taco Bell, this may, may be a huge talking point when you're explaining to your friends and family why the Trump economy is so good. They say the wages are stagnant. They say people are working two jobs. Sorry, Taco Bell's going to pay six figures. Before we get started, head over to TimCast.com slash donate if you'd like to support my work. There are several ways to give, but also stay tuned to my new channel, youtube.com slash Timcast IRL. Make sure you subscribe. New show coming in about a week, maybe a little bit longer. I've got set design stuff coming in. We're building out a new show. It's going to be news stories and topics that aren't, you know, shaping the world, but are interesting nonetheless. So if you like what I do, you liked hearing me ramble, I'm going to ramp up content like crazy. But let's get back to the news and see what's going on with Taco Bell, Business Insider Reporting. On Thursday, the fast food chain Taco Bell ch announced it would test a $100,000 salary for the general managers of a certain company own, of certain company owned locations later this year. Taco Bell also said that all employees at company owned stores are eligible for at least 24 hours of paid sick time per year starting January 1st. In a press release, Taco Bell said that it aimed to enhance restaurant performance and employee satisfaction, contributing to locations recruitment and retention. Fast food chains are battling for talent as unemployment hovers near historic lows. In November, the U.S. unemployment rate was 3.5%, the Bureau of Labor Statistics said in early December. I got to tell you, listen, let me break this down for you. Unemployment is so low that Taco Bell can't find employees, so they have to increase wages to remain competitive. Now, there is a fear that this could lead to inflation or as a product of inflation. That's not the case. Purchasing power is still good. People are buying tacos. Hence, they can afford to pay more, which means people can afford more tacos. It is good economics. Business Insider says major retailers have responded to the war for talent by raising wages with companies including Amazon, Target, and Costco, bo Costco boosting their minimum pay. Fast food chains have primarily focused on perks. Shake Shack has tested a four-day work week 
And Starbucks has added mental health benefits. Oh man. Oh no, 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 no. I gotta, I gotta do it. The left has argued for a four day work week for how long? And it's being implemented under Trump of all people without government force. I gotta tell you what, man, this, this economic spike, this, this long economic expansion is the worst argument for the left ever. And it proves so much of the right, right. Now I think it's fair to point out there's a lot of subtlety, nuance, and, and complications in a lot of how economics works. But I think you'd be a fool at this point to argue that Trump isn't doing something right. It'd be insane. It's fair to point out this economic expansion started under Obama. You know, we saw a massive recession under Bush for a lot of reasons. Under Obama, we saw a gradual recovery. And now under Trump, it is spiking like crazy. I'm not one to play these games where people say, oh, but you got to look at the past president. It's Obama's the one who fixed it. No, 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 no. I give, I give Obama credit for starting the economic expansion. No problem. But the current president takes the credit. That's the way it works. Trump's president now. Things are going really, really well. Trump's been involved in a trade war. They said it was going to hurt everybody. Trump's pulled back regulations. They would hurt everybody. And in turn, things are better than ever. Let me tell you a story, okay? I'm building out this set for this new show over at youtube.com slash timcast IRL. I went to a furniture store, picked out the stuff we're going to buy. And the woman, I kid you not, this is just, this is just the other day. And the lady asked me what I did, and she was in a good mood because I was buying, you know, set stuff, so it's, it's expensive, and she's on commission. And, and she was like, so what do you do? And I said, I do, you know, I do politics. I do a political podcast. And she was like, so what do you think's going on? You think we're going to go to war and stuff like that? And I said, I don't think so. I think things are simmering down. And, she, you know, we got into talking. She asked about, you know, what, what do you think's going to happen come, the, you know, later this year? And I said, I'll tell you what, man, Trump and the Republicans are going to sweep across the board. And she was like, really? You think so? And I was like, listen, man. You know, for all the people who say they hate Donald Trump, they say orange men bad in public, but when they turn around, they go home, talk to their wives, they say green pocket better. Trump has lined everyone's pockets with fat cash. Who's going to deny that? The orange man can be bad all day, but people want green. That's the only color that matters. And I said, I'll tell you what, man, I said to this lady, the economy is just too good right now. I was like, look at me, I'm coming in, buying all this stuff, expanding my business. And she looks at me and she goes, I did make more money this past year than I've ever made. And I was like, exactly. And I was like, now I'm in here doing this big purchase to like get my set design, right? And you're going to commission, you're making a ton of money. You're all happy. And I was like, only reason I'm do- I'm here is because the economy is doing so well. My business is expanding. I get it. Not everybody is doing that well. We do have unemployment. We do have poverty. But I was like, listen, for, for most people, man, they are seeing that green pour in and that matters. And I, I said, you know what's going to happen? They're going to come and they're going to complain all about, you know, Trump is the worst guy. They're going to get in that voting booth. They're going to look at their banking app and they're going to be like, and they're going to check R because they don't want the cash to stop. Let's read a little bit more and then I'll show you. Now I'll get to the anti portion of this, which is the Democrats. They do mention there are some negatives. Some workers have criticized the benefits when they are not coupled with higher pay. That's fair, I think. Something that could help set Taco Bell apart from the competition. For example, Some Starbucks workers have pushed back on subscriptions to a meditation app, saying they're instead seeking higher pay and an end to understaffing. As Taco Bell expands its footprint, our responsibility to drive positive impact increases, Taco Bell CEO Mark King said in a statement on Thursday, our business growth in the last decade has positioned us to create change for good and implement creative solutions for our planet, our people, and our food. Let me just drive this point home. The left is calling for a four-day work week. The left is calling for higher wages and benefits. And that's happening at these companies. And it's not through regulation. It's through the free market. That's, that, that, that to me is crazy. The best argument now is like, well, Trump got it done. Trump got you, at least at Shake Shack, Shake Shack a four-day work week. Okay? <laughs> like, so if that's what you want, we want more of whatever's going on now with a good economy. But you may laugh, okay? I know we're talking about Taco Bell. It's kind of silly. It's, it's tacos. No, this, this matters. Check this out. Do you know what the Big Mac index is? The Big Mac Index published by The Economist as an informal way of measuring purchasing power parity between two currencies and provides a test of the extent to which market exchange rates result in goods costing the same in different countries. It seeks to make exchange rate theory a bit more digestible. Let me explain. How many hours do you have to work to buy a Big Mac? That's the question. Because currency is meaningless. Like in some countries, it's like a thousand, you know, units of whatever to buy a Big Mac, but you might make 2000 per hour, in which case a half an hour buys you a Big Mac. The point is for, for a single good, most people understand, they say a McDonald's burger. You look at Taco Bell. Taco Bell is a low skill job. I get it. Managers need some experience. Okay. But seriously, it's a generalist position. 
You work at Taco Bell with no experience. Eventually, you learn how to file paperwork and do what Taco Bell needs. You can be a manager. Well, now you can be making six figures. So these low skill, these lower skill jobs, these generalist jobs are starting to pay more and offer up more benefits. That's how good the economy is. You're going to have to argue to these people they should vote for somebody who's going to raise their taxes. Never going to happen because these programs people are claiming that, that you know, need to exist. Hey, man, why am I concerned about health care when I got a fat paycheck in my pocket? Right? Not everybody. I understand. But you're going to be hard pressed to convince people to vote against this when they have disposable income. Now, something I have shown in the past. Uh, this is a Vox article from December saying Democrats 2020 economy dilemma explained where he goes on to say that at Thursday's debate back in December, there seemed to be a firm consensus among the candidates that the right path is simply to deny that the economy really is performing all that strongly. The wealthy, very wealthy are growing. Ordinary people are not growing. I don't believe it, man. I went to a furniture store and a sales lady was like, I have made more money last year than I've ever made. And I'm like, I feel it. Not everybody. I get it. There are going to be a lot of you there, you know, who are out there who are concerned that you're missing this train. And, and, and you know what? I feel for you. I do. I do. I, I, I mean this sincerely. And I, I understand there can, be, there can be more that can be done. But I'll tell you what, the economy is better than ever. OK, not everybody can get on the train. That's a fact. And it seems like the Democrats are trying to exploit the fact that sometimes people don't make it. But I tell you this, man, if unemployment is at 3.5 percent, OK, you've got a tiny minority of people who aren't riding this gravy train and you're trying to get their vote, okay, you're in the minority. The economy is going well. Bernie Sanders, I, I respect him for doing this, told the truth. I'm going to raise your taxes. I'm going to raise your taxes, but your health care costs will go down. Well, that doesn't make sense to someone like me. So you got a bunch of people who are, you know, mid, mid 20s to like early to, to late 30s, healthy, don't need to go to the doctor, don't understand why I got to have my taxes increased, raised to pay for Medicare that I don't use. Now, the argument is it's communal. We can drive prices down across the board. People who don't need to go to the doctor pay taxes, a higher tax, but it helps people who are older and people who are younger. I understand all that. I like the idea, but I do not believe you will convince the average person to give up their resources to fund people they don't know. Call it selfish, whatever. But I'm telling you this, man, even liberals and progressives are looking over their shoulder thinking like, I got cash. I'm not voting against this. So check this out. The lie is just not working, okay? The next day, CNN poll, U.S. economy receives its best ranking in nearly 20 years. So you want, you want to come and tell all these people on the debate stage, your economy is bad. You're being left behind. And then a CNN poll comes out. Actually, it's the best in 20 years. You think people are falling for it? They're not. Because if a dude at Taco Bell is seeing his salary go up to six figures, he's not complaining. And he's confused as to what you're saying. Let's, 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 let's read, a, read a little bit of this. They say, as 2019 comes to a close, the U.S. economy earns its highest ratings in almost two decades, potentially boosting President Donald Trump in matchups against the Democrats vying to face him in next year's election, according to a new CNN poll conducted by SSRS. Overall, 76% rate economic conditions in the U.S. today as very or somewhat good, significantly more than those who said so at the same time last year, 67%. This is the highest share to say the economy is good since February 2001, when 80% said so. Now, of course, it's split between party lines. They say 75% of independents, 97% of Republicans, and 62% of de uh, Democrats. Even the majority of Democrats, with all the orange men, bad muster they can spew out, recognize the economy is good. The independents do as well. How can you, how, how can you say this, right? Look, look at this. December 20th. CNN puts out a poll saying like basically seven, what is it? What's, what, let me get the number. 76% of people. Yet the day before or the same day that, you know, Vox puts out the story about the previous debate, Democrats are telling the public the economy isn't working for you. Uh, even CNN said that's not the case. Who are you trying to convince when Taco Bell employees are getting benefits when Shake Jack employees are working four day weeks, four, four day work weeks? I bring you now to the Solution, Democrats propose. Why? Jonathan Chait, the guy who apparently thinks Trump's been a Russian asset since the 1980s, says maybe nominating Bloomberg for president isn't a crazy idea. That's right. The weird independent guy who claimed that people are too stupid to know what to buy, to buy and that we should tax the poor, the guy who taxed sugary drinks because he doesn't like the idea of people choosing for themselves, who's dumping hundreds of millions of dollars into the debate. I'm sorry, into, the, into uh, the election cycle to swing it in his favor. That's the guy we should support? Bloomberg? 
No, 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 no. Now, I'm, 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 I'm not playing this game. I agree with Bernie Sanders and Ocasio-Cortez for calling him out for dumping ridiculous money into the election. Our system should not be this way, that a billionaire can spend 100 million bucks per month pumping in all of these ads to shut everyone out to dominate. Now, according to 538, in the aggregate, this dude's in fifth place. When did the left become about propping up the multimillionaire elites and the billionaires who can swing elections? They complained about Trump for this. Now they're proposing Bloomberg? Well, I tell you what, another story I've shown you just to exemplify this, uh, to, to, to once again drive the point home. Vox said Democrats are replacing Republicans as the preferred party of the very wealthy. So I'll tell you this right now. There are progressives fighting for control of the Democratic Party. I can respect that, but you're not Democrats. The Democrats is this. They've always been this. So I don't know. I don't know. I don't know what your plan is, man. I have, uh, why don't we just say the Democrats need to go away? They're, ur they're urban ivory tower elites with tons of money, swinging elections. You know, there's another story came out saying like the, the, the David Hogg stuff, the March for Our Lives was pre predominantly funded by like 36 super wealthy individuals. That is not a country I want to live in. I get Trump's a billionaire and he's, and he's, he's been accused of a lot of shady business practice stuff. I'm not a fan of his either. But Trump didn't dump ridiculous sums of money into the election. He earned press by being controversial and the media loved it. Bloomberg's doing something different. Why would they prop him up? Well, there's a reason I bring up Bloomberg, because according to a Georgetown University professor, Bloomberg wants to show Trump voters they're economically left behind. Who are you trying to convince, man? Even CNN is pointing out that's not the case. CNN is pointing out the average person thinks the economy is doing great and people have cash in their pockets. Look, man, I get it. You're not going to be able to defeat Trump if, if the economy is doing really, really well. That's, it's the economy, stupid, right? That's the only, it's like the main metric that matters, that people can spend money, that they're paying for health care, that Taco Bell, Taco Bell is paying six figures. Think about how many Big Macs you can buy per hour making six figures. Naturally, we see this story from January 2nd, The Daily Beast. The Daily Beast being a more like establishment Democrat uh, outlet saying economic indicators are all good, but they say this. People are working two to three jobs to get by. Wages are essentially flat. Layoffs are on the uptick. And it's time the 2020 Democratic presidential candidates make this a top campaign issue. Are you nuts? Are you nuts? No, unemployment is down at record lows. Maybe in, the, maybe in, in your industry, you're getting laid off because the media is collapsing. People are working two to three jobs. They are, but wages aren't essentially flat. Taco Bell is raising their salary for managers up to six figures with paid benefits. So you want to rally on this. And they are. You're going to lose. You are going to lose. You cannot push a narrative that no one believes. I want to leave you with a couple more stories to drive this point home. It's got to, I got to say it's bad news for the left. Now, listen, I am not a far leftist. I am not a socialist. I am a moderate left-leaning individual, meaning I'm rather centrist. I have no problem pointing out Trump's policies are working, and I have no problem pointing this out. Brexit boost. UK economy to surge as Boris's election victory ends uncertainty over Brexit. Boris Johnson's election victory will likely continue a boost to the UK economy as Brexit looks set to be delivered on January 31st. Now, this is not, this is not a message about Boris Johnson's policies, okay? I don't know if what they're going to implement will actually help things. And admittedly, even, you know, conservatives in the UK are a bit to the left of, uh, they're, they're considered pretty left by, by American standards. Like, they got NHS over there. But Boris Johnson and the conservatives dominated in the UK. And immediately afterwards, the economy spiked. The value of the pound spiked. It was good news across the board, mostly because it ended uncertainty. So here's what we can see. They said Trump would be bad for the economy. You had that one journalist, I'm not going to name him, saying, sell all your stocks. Stocks are way up 30% or whatever. People's, people's retirement funds are way up. The economy is better than ever under Trump. You look at Boris Johnson winning in the UK and what happens? The economy surges. And now I'm going to play a silly, silly game. I want to make sure I make this clear. I'm not saying this is definitive data. I'm not saying you need to take this all like, like, a, like a natural law or physical law. But let me just tell you, Trump wins, economy boosts, everybody's doing better than ever. Boris Johnson wins, economy boosts, and recession fears persist among debt-laden Canadians polls, uh, Canadians poll finds. Yeah, unemployment in Canada is actually pretty bad. And they say this, in an end-of-year survey for Bloomberg News by Nan Nanos Research Group, 55% of Canadians said there's at least a somewhat likely chance of a recession. I am sorry, my neighbors to the north up there in America Junior, 
you're doing uh, not too well. And uh, I can only really say that y'all voted for it. You know, down here, people voted for Donald Trump and the economy is better than ever. A lot of people are, have probably flipped to now being, you know, uh, Trump supporters after seeing how the economy has done so well. Up in Canada, you may get the ideological or moral victory, but you got some recession problems. You got debt problems, unemployment. I think their unemployment was like 7%. I could be wrong. Maybe, maybe it'll, uh, it'll mention this here. But there's a specific reason why I'm showing this story. And it's that 55% fear a recession. Now, it's not one for one. But I showed you that according to CNN, 76% of Americans think that the economy is doing great. They're not this, it's not the same question, but I think there is a correlation. There is a relation to these questions. Americans don't think a recession is coming. They think things are going great. They got fat paychecks, Taco Bell's paying six figures, but up in Canada, no, the majority is scared of a recession. Unemployment is pretty bad and they lost jobs. Okay. That was, that was like one of the latest reports Canada lost. I think so. I could be wrong about that. Fact check me on that one. But the U.S. is gaining record jobs, the best numbers of our lives. The economy is killer. It is amazing. Now, we have about 10 months, okay, into the next, in Trump's re-election and uh, uh, congressional elections. And we'll see. We'll see what happens. You know, uh, there's a problem of riding a high. Things are so good right now. They say, you know, the bigger you are, the harder you fall. And if the economy was growing slowly and it grew very, very slowly into election, that's good news. But people can be shocked by, by, by massive changes. With the economy doing so well right now, if we see a, a hard fall to like December levels, things will still be really, really good, but people will feel hurt. And that feeling will drive, you know, votes. So the reason I bring this up right now is it's a, it's a, it's a long line of these stories just showing us how the economy is doing well. It's doing great in the UK. It's doing bad in Canada for a variety of reasons. That's unfortunate. And people are really happy. And this is a warning to Democrats. You can't pretend the economy is bad, okay? CNN saying straight up, people don't think so. When you get up on that stage and say the economy is bad, what do you think the average person's gonna think? They're gonna think that's not true. Who are you talking to? You're not talking to me. And then Trump's gonna get up on stage at this rally. He's gonna be in Wildwood, New Jersey, blue state, rallying, and people are gonna be like, I got cash to spend on the boardwalk, man. And Trump's gonna call it out. He's going to say, how many of you got disposable cash? You're going to go buy some stuffed animals for your kids, spend money on the boardwalk, and they're going to raise their hands. And they're going to be like, you can't deny it. You can't. So I'll leave you with one final thought. The only color that matters come election time is green. It doesn't matter if the orange man is bad. It matters that the orange man hands you that green. If Democrats don't get on that, they don't pay attention to that, you continually saying the economy is not working, it's not going to work for anybody. You're not going to win. Stick around. Next segment's coming up at 6 p.m. YouTube.com slash TimCastNews, and I will see you all there.